Okay. Appreciate you guys being here now or later. This is a crazy stream. Mm. And there's a lot of crazy stuff we could talk about today, but we're going to talk about this because ever since I was young, man, four or five years old, I remember evil coming at me, mainly from my stepdad. Nobody ever stepped in. My mom never stepped in, stopped it for me and my brother. My brother's now dead. He died uh, uh, two years ago. My stepdad's real daughter with my mom, she's dead now. She died from, again, I didn't know he was beating on her. I had no idea until later. And uh, she just began walloping on the weight. A beautiful girl. And uh, had, you know, different babies by different men. And ended up having an epileptic seizure because she got so big. She got so big and so unhealthy. And she was a gorgeous girl. Blue eyes, blonde hair, you know, five foot ten for a woman that's kind of tall. And, uh, you know, so I had to put her in the ground. Me, uh, me and my brother did, and then he died two years ago. This stream, the reason I want to do it is because, and you, you saw the, you saw the, the thumbnail. People are, you're, you're naive if you don't think that people will do you harm. This was a 30 year thing that happened among a guy that used to work for the, the dude he did this to. He stole his identity. I'm going to show you the screen in a second. Stole his identity, used it to get all sorts of things for himself and his family, and even helped raise his own son. Like he, the guy that stole the identity, used this other dude's money and his lines of credit to, to raise his own son, impersonating this guy. Mm -hmm. This guy, the guy that he did that to, used to be a, a, a hot dog vendor, and I don't know where, but he was a hot dog vendor. And the, this dude that did it worked for him. So there was a relationship. There was a friendship. There was something going on. It was a business relationship. He ended up, the, the dude that got his identity stolen ended up becoming homeless and was put in a mental institution over all of this. So let me let me share this screen. Hurricane's going to read it because she has a much prettier ver <laughs> voice. So let me let her read this off. And that's the picture of him right there on the screen. All right, so Matthew David Kearns spent more than 30 years pretending to be William Donald Woods, more than 30 years, and the man whose identity he stole went to jail for it. And when you scroll down this, this is the dude here. He was actually a senior level hospital administrator in the, in the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics up in Iowa City, okay? Go ahead, pretty girl. Uh, in 2019, William Donald Woods walked into a national bank in Los Angeles and said that his identity had been stolen and that he could not pay the large debts that had been accrued under his name. He bought his social security card and uh, authentic state identification. But the federal prosecutors in Iowa say that Woods, who was homeless at the time and could not answer a set of security questions connected to the account, the bank also called the Los Angeles de Police Department. The LAPD contacted. Wait, I don't know if this is on the stream. Is that on? The, yep, it's on the stream. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. Keep keep rolling, yep. pretty girl. The LAPD contacted that. Uh, yeah, contacted who they believed to be the actual Woods in Wisconsin. Woods in Wisconsin, and that man faxed them what prosecutors now say was a series of phony identification documents, telling them by phone that he had not authorized anyone in California to access his bank accounts. Oh, this is crazy. Police arrested Woods, charging him under the name of Matthew David Kearns. Oh, so they swapped identities then. On two felony charges and held him without bail in L.A. Uh, County Jail in 2019. Throughout criminal proceedings, Woods never wavered. He was not Matthew Kearns or Kearns. Um, a California state court ordered him to use only their true name, Matthew Kearns, uh, per the order cited in Iowa prosecutors referred to as California Bill, as the criminal uh, uh, the criminal complaint obtained by People, uh, People magazine. Ma used to be magazine, didn't it? Uh, Woods would spend 428 days in jail, and when a judge determined that he was not competent to stand trial, he was forced to spend another 147 days at a Californian mental institution, or mental hospital, sorry. Iowa prosecutors say that the court also ordered him placed on uh, psychotherapy, Psychotropic. That's the word. Medication. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. There's there's this POS right here. There's this POS. That's the yeah. That's the that's bad, that's the dude. That's the, the dude who guy. stole the 
That's the dude. Let me put us up on dual screen here just for a second. Let me put us up on dual. This, uh, nope, let me, let me get the prettiest, prettiest girl in the whole wide world back in here. There you go. This whole thing, when I when I read down this, and again, the links for this are all in the description of the video. By the way, if while we're talking to you, you see a bear come up behind us on our porch here next to the lake that we're at, let us know so we don't get attacked by a bear <laughs> from behind. We we uh, the trust did pick up a, a property in South Dakota, so you're an official South Dakota official. Yes, like yes. we were we resident, were the long term resident. Now we yeah. were the one day residents. Now we're official. We're mm -hmm. we're legit mm -hmm. as of yesterday, and we're right by a lake. Uh, like I told you guys, when you're looking at real estate, always try to buy something that needs a little bit of work, and buy something near a, pl a plot of water if you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to this. This whole thing, when you read down this, I'm going to let Hurricane finish doing this. This whole thing, let me put it back up on fuller screen for you. Oops. Bang, bang. So he spent so he spent 575 day, days in jail, detained after he proclaimed his own identity. He did not waver. In 2013, this is down here at the bottom, Kieran's was hired under the Woods alias at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics wow. using false documents, including fictitious I-9 forms, fictitious social security numbers, et cetera. Okay. He took out eight vehicle and personal loans. Shoot, totaling mm -hmm. more than $200,000 from two Iowa credit unions using Woods' name, social security number, and date of birth. He also kept deposits at the National Bank and uh, where actual where the actual Woods was arrested in his first attempt to report him, my gosh, could you imagine? You're reporting your own account and you get arrested for it. Meanwhile, Woods was released from jail in 2021 after pleading no contest to the false charges in exchange for time served. He began to investigate the man whose chicane chicanery 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 led uh, to his being thrown in jail. Gosh. Poor guy. In July, the interview with a detective, Kearns, who had pretended to be Woods for more than half his life, called Woods crazy. And he said that he needed help and should be locked up. During Woods' incarcer incarceration, Kearns had uh, called the LAPD and city district attorney's office numerous times uh, per prosecutors, requesting updates on Woods' prosecution. Wow. That's evil. That's evil. It's a, it's beyond evil. Let's finish making up. Sure, making sure he's in jail and 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 even the updates on his time in jail for a crime that you are the one that committed. Gosh. So these these links to this this article are in the description of the video. There's actually another one from I think Fox News covered it on Fox News Five in Iowa. They knew each other. They worked to get together. One guy had the senior position at one point because the dude who stole his identity worked mm -hmm. for the dude for Woods, and then he steals his identity and uses it for over 30 years, and this other guy goes homeless and gets put in jail and a mental institution, and this dude doing it has no regrets, no remorse. Now, having said that, having said that, because I know somebody that when she jumped in, my, in our truck and we began driving team together, she was very naive about, re I shouldn't say real life, because she was living real life in China, mm. being a missionary. But she was, she believed people were all good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to share some of that? Yeah, like I, I walk through life giving more of the benefit of the doubt than just kind of hitting, uh, meeting people face to face in a sense, you know, like uh, at, face value. You know, I, I kind of almost gave more of the benefit of the doubt and then some, and it wasn't necessarily, it was just, you know, I lived in Asia for 20 years. So their, their, their crime is different. So the whole scenario of, uh, you know, uh, going to jail for certain things and being guilty until proven innocent, if you're, you know, in trouble on that. So that was a little bit different, but also just being a missionary and being around a community of people that, you know, we were basically doing, missionary stuff so of course there you know a lot of it was humanitarian work and other things like that you know and helping people in need and so when you're in that community 
you're the ones that either helping those that are in need or you are there's a lot of honesty around it was a it wasn't a sheltered life but it was more of a community that i had spent so much time in i hadn't really been in like the western world a lot and of course asia on top of that i just had a different a different mentality i think you know and i i naively gave the benefit of the doubt to more than others like i, I you know, people would say, well, you know, that person could do this. And I'm like, no, you know, like, really, you know, and I've realized, um, especially being in the trucking industry, that it just, we just need to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. And even in the last three or four years, things have just gotten a lot more, there's a lot more evil presence around now, nowadays. So yeah. that's, the, that's the stream. We're, uh, we're 10 minutes, actually 11 minutes in. You, you guys are so chatty <laughs> on a Friday night. Wanted to bring that story to you because that is crazy. I want to tell all you folks, I've been dealing with this stuff since I was, let's just say, for 59 years. Because when I was about four, I began to be conscious. I began to get conscious of how much evil was in my house. And then because I was raised in some trauma, I tended to be with women that had alleged trauma. But they'll, they'll look you right in the eye and they will lie to you as well. And, uh, and they'll also share your tax returns. But the... Uh, this stream, it's just bizarre how crazy you can be to do that for 30 years to somebody that you used to know, have no beef with them, with them, and you end up getting them put in jail and end up, ending up getting them in a men mental institution. And you're still trying to use their stuff when the bank contacts you 30 years later after everything you've done. Mm. So that's the stream. You guys be good. We're from South Dakota right now. <laughs> yes. um, we're heading back to Montana probably Thursday or Friday of this coming week. Crazy enough, it's been a beautiful, beautiful. Where well, this is our three-year anniversary coming up, isn't it? At the end of this month, yes. When yes. I first laid eyes on yes. you, yes. When I when I first jumped into the truck. <laughs> come on, come on. You guys be good. God bless you. Want to say goodbye in Chinese? Yeah, just uh, be gentle as doves and wise as serpents in this day and age uh goodbye good night and god bless you all uh how do i say that <laughs> and don't ask me you guys be good